Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all okay. Um, this is part one in a series of videos on the Enrico TM7, which I'll come to in a minute. So, a while ago I did a review on this device here, which is the um, Radio Tone RT3. It comes in various different guises from different online stores, um, such as the um, F22 Android PTT, the Broadnet BN01, but they're all um, the same uh, device inside. Now, before I start this review, let me make it clear that these are not radios. Um, they have an appeal to a lot of radio users, which is what I'll come to, and they look like radios, but they're not radios. I'm fully aware of that. I had a lot of comments on the review on this saying it's not a radio, and I'm fully aware of it. They are branded as network radios, but they're not a two-way radio, as you and I would call a two-way radio. So let me just be clear on that one for the start. So these are becoming increasingly popular um, with apps such as Zello, TeamSpeak and FRN uh, and with these lower versions of Android people are actually making various PTT apps to go with these. So what they allow you to do is talk to each other, talk in groups, uh, privately, over the internet um, using a PTT button. Um, they are, I suppose, a novelty really because there's nothing that this does that your smartphone can't do, uh, i.e. an iPhone. Um, or something like that, but they're, they're nice, uh, a nice device, nice and rugged and um, just another avenue to radio. So the videos were quite popular with this, had a lot of people asking questions, giving comments and stuff and uh, the feedback was uh, was relatively good. So thank you for that. Um, so I've had this for a while and I'm really impressed with it. It's uh, a nice little device. It does run old Android, um, you know, and there's nothing, uh, there's nothing new and special about these sorts of devices, but it is good, I am impressed with it and I do use it every day and when 2 meters and 70 centimeters are dead around here, which is often the case, um, I can talk to other amateurs, uh, other friends and anyone on this. Um, so yeah, it is quite good um, and I would highly recommend these. So what I want to go through today is this device, which is the Enrico TM7. <coughs> and this is branded as a network mobile radio and I'll show you what's in the box and we'll do a quick overview of it. So I was looking online a while back at PTT devices and I came across this and I got in touch with the seller, asked him a few questions and um, I ended up purchasing one and we've uh, sort of worked together to get some information and do a review on it, uh, which is what I'm doing today. So before I start with this, there's a link in the description below um, and it's valid at the time of filming and thereafter uh, for as long as the seller agrees to have it up which will offer you 10% discount on this radio with the voucher code um, in the description below. So that's a, a nice little bonus. I don't gain anything from that, so if you buy one, I don't gain anything from it. Um, I'm just working with uh, with the store to, to help promote these, uh, these really good devices. So I've had this a couple of weeks now. <clears throat> Some of my um, existing subscribers will know that I've not really done much on YouTube for a few weeks, so I've not been too well. So I've, I, I have had a chance to play around with this, so it's not going to be a true unboxing because everything's out here on the table. I'm just going to show you what's inside the box. So you can see on the box there, uh, the graphic work on the front of the radio, and then there's some IMEI codes on the side, and it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, and you can see there, it's the Enrico TM7. So I'll put that to one side, and I'll show you what you get in the box. So in no particular order, you get a GPS antenna there with an SMA connector on the um, on the end and on the other end you've got your GPS antenna there with a sticky back um, plastic which you can oops, mount to your car windscreen for any applications that use GPS. You've got a microphone bracket there and a set of screws. You've got thumb screws in there for the mounting bracket and screws to mount the bracket onto whatever you want to mount it onto, so whether it's the dashboard of your car, um, a desk, anything like that. You've got the mounting bracket, which is a nice uh, metal mounting bracket there with plastic uh, teeth on the side for um, gripping the radio in, um, in one position, so you don't have to tighten them too tight. You've got a 12 volt power cable there, which I really liked. It's a fused power cable, and on one end it's got two tinned um, wires for plugging into a radio power supply. You can also link that up, uh, solder it to a car 12 volt power supply, a cigarette lighter power supply, or um, you can use a mains um, adapter to convert it to 12 volt. But that's what this radio runs off, 12 volts. And there's an inline fuse, and on the end you've got the little plug that goes into the radio. <coughs> 
got the radio itself, which I'll come to in a minute. And you've also got a microphone with the flexed uh, cord, an RJ connector on the end, and the bracket on the back for, for mounting onto the holder. And it's a really solid microphone as well. That was one thing that impressed me with this uh, with this radio. Um, you know, usually with a lot of these mobile radios, the microphone lets them down, but this is quite a, a decent microphone, so um, that's all good. And then inside, you've got the user manual, which is really, really straightforward. English is good. Uh, it's English on one side and Chinese on the other. And it just shows you some of the buttons and functions, but if you're familiar with radios and Android phones and smartphones and technology, you're not really going to need that. It's very, very simple. So what I'll do, guys, is I'll bring the camera in and I'll show you some of these bits and pieces uh, in more detail. And we'll go through the setup on this radio. Okay, guys, so here's the unit itself in front of me now. You can see it's um, it's in quite a nice size unit. I was, I was really surprised when it came, um, the size of it. Um, I thought it would be smaller on the front and deeper at the back and it's actually nice and chunky on the on the front sort of the size of your Motorola and Hytera type mobile radios but nice and shallow at the back and that's because there isn't nearly half the hardware in this than there is in a proper radio so nice uh, nice small plastic shell on it which means it can be easily mounted on a shelf on a desk uh, in your car under the dashboard it's, it's going to go um, in places that a normal radio can't go so quite happy with that. <clears throat> I'll just run, run around some of the controls on the front. So you've got this knob here, which is a control selector, and it pushes in to, um, to actually select what you've moved it to. So you turn this around and it selects different options on the screen. I thought this would have actually been a volume control, but it's not. Um, that's what it's used for. You can map um, these buttons in an app on Android, apparently, which I'm going to go through in probably part two or part three in the series on this video so I'll come to that. You've got your power on button there, you've got the socket for the microphone and you've got P1, P2, P3 and P4. Now P1 and P2, uh, P1 changes between SIM 1 and SIM 2 because it's a dual SIM device. P2 changes between 3G and 4G and P3 and P4 are programmable. You can't do that in the radio itself and you have to do that through the app um, which you've got to download but I've only spoke to the manufacturer briefly about that so I'm going to get back to you on that one guys. SOS button there, um, as the radio comes that's inactive but you can again set that up. You've got up and down buttons there for the volume and you've got a back button there to exit out of menus. Obviously the manufacturer's logo on the front there and underneath a speaker which is really good quality um, for its size. Uh, sometimes on a lot of these devices, such as this, the speaker tends to let them down, but the speaker on this is fantastic. On the side there, you've got a screw hole for your mounting bracket, and you can see vent holes in there for the uh, to let heat out, but this radio doesn't get warm at all, so that's uh, something you don't need to worry about. On the back there, we've got some IMEI numbers. You've got uh, various information there about the manufacturer um, as standard. You've got a GPS antenna. You've got a normal antenna for a 4G antenna, which again you don't need because it has internal antennas anyway, so don't worry about that. You've got a vent on the back there for any heat build up. Again, um, not sure why that's there because this radio um, slash phone doesn't generate any heat whatsoever. And you've got your 12 volt slash 24 volt input for your supply cable or a 24 volt to 12 volt adapter uh, for the mains. And there's another hole on the side for the mounting bracket. Here we've got a headphone port under here and a micro USB connector there under a rubber seal. And that's the controls on the radio. Underneath what we've got is a little hatch here that screws on which houses you two SIM cards. I'm not going to take it off because these screws are tiny and I don't want to lose them. Um, but you literally just unscrew that and you've got two slots inside for SIM cards. Uh, there's no slot there for any external memory but it does come with um, internal memory so that's something you don't need to worry about the weight of this device um, with the um, microphone on is 950 grams so it's a, a weighty little device but nothing that's uh, too heavy and uh, and yeah that's the uh, that's the basic um, controls on the device just want to show you the microphone again you've got an RJ connector on the front there with a sealed rubber housing which just pushes in on the front and clicks into place and that's not going to go anywhere. Really nice solid microphone, solid cable on it and um, you can hear the click of the PTT there. It um, works really well, um, not had any issues with it and you've got the panel on the back there for mounting onto the bracket. So yeah, 
that's a nice microphone. Sometimes a lot of microphones on these cheap devices let them down um, on radios and sort of mobile devices, but that's a, a really good solid microphone, doesn't creak. Nice solid connector on there, so yeah, really happy with that. <clears throat> Just on the back, this is where your GPS antenna plugs in. Just on the SMA connector there, but you don't need to do that guys unless you've got an application that's, that's going to use GPS. So I'm not going to show you that today because I don't use any of those types of apps. We've also got a close look at the power cable. So as I said, it comes with two tinned ends, so you can do whatever you wish with those. And the other end is your 12 volt plug there, which just simply plugs into the back of the device. Mounting bracket here, again just slides on and those teeth lock into there when the thumb screws are put in and that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, you can have it either way so you can mount it like that or you can mount it oops, the other way and have it suspended from a shelf or something like that. That works really well, solid um, solid again, metal, um, so yeah, nice addition. You've got the bag here as I said with your thumb screws in and your mounting screws there and lastly the little microphone holder with a couple of screws. So overall, quite impressed with the construction of this um, this device. One thing I did just forget to mention is the screen. It's two and a quarter inch, just under two and a half inch LCD screen. It is quite small, but you can use it. Um, you can use it to tap the keyboard. Can be a little bit fiddly, but a stylus does the job, no problem at all. You've also got an LED there, which can be programmed in that uh, mapping software to. Um, come on and off when you transmit it doesn't at the moment but again that's no big deal so that's a brief overview of the outside of the radio guys what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug this into a power supply so i'm just going to use an old cb power supply three three to five amp absolutely more than enough and i'll show you what's going on inside this device okay so we're plugged into the power supply now and i'm just going to push the on button and you just hold it down for a second and the radio will start up and you can see there just says starting on the screen I've left the screen protector on um, just so it doesn't get scratched it takes a minute to boot up um, just like uh, an Android smartphone because that's what it is and you can see Android starting up there and it just uh, takes a second to load Okay, so there we go, you've got the little desktop screen there and it just takes a couple of seconds for everything to come through but you've got the clock, the date, you've got a signal meter on the top right there. So just like a normal Android desktop there, you push that button and you see all your apps. I'm not going to go into all these apps in detail because um, that's not what the video is about but you've got the clock there which is self-explanatory, file manager for, for photos and videos because this um, device has external cameras, external printers that you can buy for it, uh, which I don't have, but you can use those to take photos and things like that. But you've got file manager on there. Maps, which does work. Messaging, so this, despite it being a phone, will send and receive text messages, but won't send and receive calls. There's no option um, on the screen there to send and receive calls. And I did try and ring it, and it said this device isn't accepting calls at the moment. You've got your Play Store there, your Google Play Store, so you can download apps. So any app will work on this, um, or should I say most apps work on this. So Facebook will work on it, WhatsApp, uh, YouTube will work on it, and it does play videos on there, just like this one does. You've got settings here, which is what we'll have a quick run through. So if you can see the screen there, we've got uh, Wi-Fi settings, so you can um, join to Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth on and off, SIM cards, so you can select the options for the dual SIMs in there. Data usage, and if we just click on more, you've got aeroplane mode, tethering and portable hotspots, VPN, mobile networks, just basically all the stuff you'd expect to find on a phone. Just oops, just scrolling down there, we've got display options so you can set the brightness of the screen, sounds and notifications, app management, storage and USB, and memory. So just on memory there, you can see we've got um, average memory use of 362 megabytes. Uh, total memory 467 megabytes and free 106 megabytes so memory on this there is some memory but it doesn't um, doesn't have a great deal of memory but if you're just using it to communicate with you don't need tons of memory anyway personally you've got location settings there security so you can put a pin lock on this and other sorts of things 
accounts, that's for Google accounts, so you can link your G Plus accounts to those. Google settings, language and input, and backup and reset. All really straightforward stuff, guys. Um, if any of you watching this want me to go into any of these settings in more detail, just drop me a comment and I'll, I'll do that for you. Time and date settings, schedule power on and off, so you can set it to turn on or off when you want it to. Accessibility, so that's um, larger typefacing and things like that for people with um, various disabilities. Printing, so as I say, there is an external printer for this which you can use. I would imagine you can also print over Bluetooth if you needed to. And just about the phone at the bottom there, we've got the um, status which tells you phone number and, it, and all that sort of stuff which I'm not going to show you, obviously. You've got your model number there, TM7, Android version 6.0. You've got your Android security patch level. Um, and all sorts of bits of uh, software and hardware related data there. So that's quite straightforward there guys, we've got uh, just gone through all the, the sort of settings. <clears throat> and the main event at the bottom, Zello, which is the main app I've bought um, this device to use. Okay, so I am going to do a video showing you how to use Zello um, guys at a later date on this radio um, slash phone. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview now. So I've set up a channel on Zello so you can do one-to-one -one communications and you can do group communications. It is entirely private. Um, just one thing to note is like this RT3 here, this runs on mobile data and Wi-Fi. So I'm in the home at the moment and we're running on Wi-Fi. You can see the little logo at the top there. So that's what we're using. Um, I've got a data sim in here, which is really cheap. Um, you know, a lot of people could be put off by something like that, but you can get data so cheap and it uses so little data. Um, these these sound um, messages that are going off through this app are just such low quality. They're fully readable, but the low quality in terms of the file size is so small that it doesn't use hardly any data. So I'm on my own channel here which is Ringway Manchester just a note guys please don't add this channel and um, this is just what I use for testing these devices and other bits and pieces so um, please don't add me on this channel if you want to add me on Zello um, on this device it's RM comms TM7 and on this device it's just RM comms RM obviously standing for Ringway Manchester so please don't add the channel Ringway Manchester because um, I won't accept you to it because it's just for testing only so we're on the channel there on both these devices and if I key up the mic Test one two. Test one two. Test one two. Test one two. Now there is a slight delay that can be caused by all sorts of things. It can be Wi-Fi. Um, don't forget this is running purely over the internet and um, through lots of different places, different servers. So there is sometimes a slight delay. I spoke to a friend of mine for, on this for about two hours the other night, and we didn't notice any any delay whatsoever. Um, so you can see the devices work with each other just like a radio would. So I'm keying up in Zello and this device is receiving it. I'll key up on this one and you can see the TM7 was receiving it. So I'll show you Zello in more detail in uh, probably the next video guys but that's a little bit of an overview. Um, what you can do with Zello is add different channels so people stream their scanner feeds, people stream their amateur radio feeds, people stream all sorts over Zello so you know if there's nothing happening in your scanner there's other groups um, across different areas that are streaming scanners um, streaming all sorts of stuff, talking to other amateur radio, there's amateur radio clubs, amateur radio groups on Zello, so it really does open the doors, um, you know, and for someone who has plan issues that can't put an antenna up, this is a great way of keeping in touch with their amateur radio friends, although not strictly radio, it's another avenue of communications, and let's face it, that's what radio is all about for a lot of us. So, back to this device, it does have a touch screen, so if you don't have the microphone, you can key up um, by touching the microphone logo on the screen there. So it's a fully um, a fully fledged touch screen on there. And I just want to see if I can show you the keyboard. So as I say, it is quite a small keyboard. So if I, tap, if I click in the box there, the little keyboard comes up. It is a little bit fiddly. Oops. As you can see, but a stylus um, will work absolutely fine on there. And I've got quite chunky fingers, so I do find it a little bit difficult. That's probably the only negative of the radio, but the screen's tiny on this anyway, so it's it's not something that's new. Um, it doesn't affect the use of the radio whatsoever, but the keyboard is quite small on the screen, but it is a fully working touch screen. 
which is um, which is good. Okay guys, so that was part one. Um, just an overview and to show you what you get when you buy this radio. Um, like I say, there will be more parts coming um, with this. I'll do um, a video showing you how to work Zello on this and what Zello is all about. We'll also do a bit of testing and have a bit of a QSO. Um, I have did put a couple of calls out, but on the groups I'm on, um, there was no one online at the moment, but I'll, uh, I've only got a couple of groups on this, so I'll get some more groups added and we'll, we'll, we'll get a QSO um, set up on here just to show you uh, how it works. And I've got all the bits and pieces coming. I'll show you how to map the buttons and things like that. But yeah, it's a great, um, great device. Um, definitely a alternative to radio or a sideline to all uh, to radio. I was talking to a friend of mine the other night who's moved out of the area and we're no longer in radio contact because of where he's moved to. So this just allows us to talk, um, and this allows us to talk. Uh, he's got one as well, so you know it's great for keeping in touch. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm well aware that these are just smartphones at the end of the day, they're not technically radios, but they are a great little device and a nice uh, addition to the shack. And as I say, for people who have planning issues who can't put antennas up, it's another avenue to go down. There's plenty of amateurs on here. In fact, I've probably spoken to more amateurs on here in the past um, couple of weeks than I have on the radio, because um, we know how quiet radio can be from time to time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. It's just a basic overview. I've got plenty more coming on this radio. As I say, there is a link in the description where you can buy this radio with a 10% discount from the store. Um, and um, I got the unlocked version, which is slightly more expensive, but it's um, it's not limited to um, to certain networks. So just check that out when you are looking to buy. The locked version um, is um, quite a bit cheaper, but I'd go for the unlocked one, but that's up to you. As I say, I don't benefit anything from you going on and clicking and purchasing from that link below. Um, it's just a um, agreement that me and the store set up when we discussed reviewing this radio and sort of getting it out there to the community. I think there's definitely, um, definitely uh, a way forward in 3G and 4G communications um, over these sorts of devices um, using Wi-Fi and mobile data uh, as a sideline to radio. There's also um, you know, a lot of commercial uses to these devices, um, whether it was security, whether it's, you know, there's a million and one um, businesses and organisations out there that use radio and for a lot of them I'm sure these would be a better alternative. So yeah, um, I'll leave that one there guys, that was part one, plenty more coming on this, so um, make sure you stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscription button below, really appreciate it, we're um, well over 2,000 subscribers now, so thanks so much Oops, for that. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you've got any feedback, suggestions about this device, um, what are your thoughts on it, what do you think of it, um, is it a good sideline to radio, is it going to kill radio? Um, let me know. Drop me a comment in the box below. I, you know, I've done a couple of videos lately that have generated a lot of discussion. So by all means, um, talk to me in the box below. Let me know what your thoughts are on these devices. Is it something that's interested to interesting to you? Um, is it something you wouldn't touch with a ten foot barge pole because you radio through and through? Um, let me know. Let's get a discussion going on this, uh, guys, and see uh, see where it goes. So, thanks for watching, um, and stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next one. Quick one guys, if you've not already checked out Ringway Manchester 2, that's my second channel, the link is in the description below and also on the screen here. Um, head over there, um, hit subscribe, we're on over 100 subscribers over there now which is, uh, which is brilliant. So um, head over there, see what you think, it's more of a sort of B-roll channel, very similar to this one, so if you like what you see on here, you're going to like what you see on there. Um, I still put 99% of my content on this channel anyway, um, that one's just a sideline for stuff that doesn't really fit with this channel. So yeah, head over there, click subscribe um, and uh, stay tuned for more on there as well. Thanks very much.